2014 was a great season for adventure. With over 40 different guidable trips, those adventures never seem to end for me here in Central Oregon. That's me, Dan Anthon, the head guide for the Fly Fisher's Place in Sisters, Oregon, and pro staff member for Echo Fly Rods and Airflow Fly Lines. The Salmon Fly Hatch was incredible, and after all the years of guiding for these red sides, they never ceased to surprise me with their explosive takes. Safe to say we had one of our busier guide seasons. And being a new father to my son Auckland, I was still able to squeeze in a couple days of my own on the river. Here I am on the middle of shoots, hooked up with a nice brown. Pondering, well, what exactly am I gonna do this winter for fishing? It's early morning in February, just off the coast of Cancun on the island of Isla Mujeres. My wife and I led a small group down to the Mexico Yucatan Peninsula for a yoga retreat and fly fishing adventure. I began my exploration of the island by looking for shoreline access, open piers, and lost structures. Pretty much anywhere I could sink a fly into. As I explored, I paid close attention to the birds, and in this case, the seagulls, looking to take advantage of the bait fish seeking refuge in the shallows. The piers and the pylons and pretty much any structure that's out there along the coastline is going to offer some great habitat for these fish to kind of hang out in and ambush prey. And it's from the top of the food chain all the way down. As I fished the island, I was fortunate to use the Echo 3S in both the 8 and 10 weight saltwater series, matched in balance with Echo's Ion Reel and Sealed Drag System, and Airflow's Ridge Clear Tropical Clear Tip. Everything worked together flawlessly, and the line with its 12 foot clear tip was like having ninja abilities, throwing that line across enemy lines, nobody knows I'm there, I'm undetected, that fly lands right on the fish's pillow, he comes over and hits it. And bam! It's like ripping him out of his universe with a solid hook set. It was awesome. Notice that aquamarine sand patch center frame, and right under my hand, you can see the barracudas. They were from three to four and a half feet in length, lurking and possibly preying on the cuda that I just hooked and released. The axis on the island can offer some challenges, but armed with a big smile and some basic Spanish, you might get permission to access a private area or pier. And of course, having a few cold beers at the ready never seemed to hurt sealing the deal and getting their permission. Here's a good look at uh, a jack, also called a bluefin runner, and we catch these down in Belize as well. Um, right off the pier here, there's a couple schools of them moving back and forth, and they were crashing on that bait fish as well. Very fun, lots of action when it comes to uh, this type of fish. So if you ever see them busting the surface of the water, get a fly in there. It can be fast and furious. On
on this particular trip they averaged about this size and um, we were taking them on um, smaller shrimp patterns and um, smaller uh, bait fish patterns so really a, a fun exciting fish if you get a chance to hit them but uh, definitely get your fly in there watch for that pushing water or moving water as those uh, fish are up there to crash the bait Possibly too much tequila, definitely not enough water from the night before. My friend Rob Boniker and I left Isla in the cover of darkness aboard the local commuter ferry to meet our guide Enrique just outside of Cancun to begin our flats fishing adventure. Here's Enrique, a mass marauder. Man, this guy changed my world when it comes to fly fishing. I out fishing the flats over 15 years ago with a buddy of mine and I have been really working hard at trying to catch many different species that you'd find out here. The permit being one, it's elusive, it's, um, it's evaded my hook many a times and shaken me off. Um, but the wildlife that you'll see on a flat strip is, is second to none. From, from, from permit to bonefish to tarpon to snook, kubera snapper, uh, barracuda, you name it, they're out there. And there's many more fish that you'll come in contact with. Not to mention the wildlife, from uh, various sharks that inhabit the reefs to, um, to rays. The environment can change often, and so can the conditions that we're fishing in along the way. From gale force winds to you know, a small drizzle or potentially a heavy downpour. Regardless of what you're finding yourself in, um, you're dealing with a new weather pattern in a matter of minutes. Here we're traveling through um, a mangrove forest from one flat to another. And from one side it was really heavy wind and on the other side completely calm. Keep your attention. The longer you move across the flats, the more likely it is you're going to run into something. And it can be that blink of an eye, that one opportunity where your trophy dreams have been met. So don't lose focus and be ready. job of steadily moving us across the flat coming in contact with lots of different fish along the way but what helped us all is that there was three eyes three sets of eyes looking across the flat looking for shadows looking for moving water looking for tailing fish here Enrique breaks the silence and says at your 10 o'clock fish and it's like time stood still and the tail's coming at me and I make the cast
amazingly, these fish are so well designed to fight you. I mean, they're, they're bullets. They're ripping from one side of the boat to the next. And uh, one of the coolest things that you'll see with these uh, permit bonefish is that, you know, from one minute they're straight out in front of you, the next minute they've, you know, shot 30, 40, 50 feet away to the right, and your line is having to catch up. Um, and it rips across the surface, offering just an amazing sound. Um, just, just unreal. I can't even begin to describe what it feels like to catch this fish after all the years I've spent pursuing it. Not to mention the amount of money that goes into planning these trips down to uh, Yucatan and Belize, the Bahamas. I mean, it's it's mind-boggling. But I finally put one to the boat, and uh, it was worth it was worth the wait. Permit was just one of the fish that we hit along the way. Um, there were countless bonefish that were kind of moving along the flats in singles and uh, multiple fish in schools. So we were lucky to hit um, both permit and uh, and the bonefish, as well as have shots on some larger barracuda that were out there to munch on these uh, bonefish. A good guy will do whatever he can do to maneuver the boat so that you're making the 
best possible presentation. So when the winds come up in your face or if they come in at your back, um, your guide's working hard for you um, so that you can get that one shot in and hopefully make it work. Here I'm, I'm casting to a school of about 30, maybe 50 permit. Um, you can't see their tails so much in this frame, but they're there. And uh, like because of Enrique's efforts, I was able to make several shots on these fish before finally yeah. hooking up. <laughs> One thing that I can always say that you should plan on, or, or for that matter, not plan on, is the unknown. You know, we set out on this trip to catch snooks. That was the prime fish for that time of the year. And because weather had changed and patterns had changed, the permit were up on the flat feeding, and it's not necessarily expected that time of year that we're down there. So, lo and behold, here I am, hooked up with my second permit. And again, I was thinking this day when we went out, we were going after snuff. This Yucatan adventure was made possible with my friends at the Fly Fisher's Place, Echo Fly Rods, Airflow Fly Lines, and of course we can't forget our good friends down in Cancun, Cancun Fly Fishing. Enrique, you made a very memorable trip, so I really thank you, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the future. You are the man. <laughs>